as 0 n plus phi is not necessarily periodic. We examine the question of periodicity of sinusoidal sequences and we observe that it is periodic only if omega 0 by 2 pi is equal to a rational number that is an integer divided by another integer. This is the condition of periodicity. And then we looked at the sampling process in <coughs> two stages and we showed by an example that the sampling frequency fs must be greater than or equal to twice the highest frequency content of the signal. And if this is not obeyed, then there occurs what is known as aliasing distortion, which basically means that high frequencies pose as low frequencies and that is the origin of the term aliasing. This has an effect on the band of frequencies that we should focus on. I told you that omega 0 is a normalized digital frequency, it is actually twice pi f 0 divided by f s and the range of omega therefore is to be restricted to omega less than pi. The magnitude sign is indicated because actually the band is minus pi to plus pi. Okay? So, magnitude omega between 0 and pi that is our range of vision. Then we discussed operations on sequences basically three or four of them, four multiplication, addition, time reversal and delay. And then we took an example of a schematic diagram of a digital system and we showed that you can write the difference <coughs> equation from the given diagram. Vice versa is also true that is given a dif difference equation you can always draw a schematic diagram. The schematic diagram is a description of the hardware as well as software and therefore it is a very useful form. Then we discussed some examples of digital systems. First we took the example of an accumulator, then we took an example of an up sampler. Incidentally an up sampler is schematically represented like this. X of n is the input to an up sampler and if the sampling is increased by the factor L then the representation is an upward arrow and the factor by which the sampling rate is altered or increased is indicated here and this is y of n. Basically we showed that this amounts to padding zeros L minus 1 zeros between two consecutive samples and therefore the nature of the signal is not altered. The signal is the same but it is stretched, stretched with zeros in between two consecutive samples. In a similar manner we can also think of a down sampler and down sampler naturally shall have an arrow pointing down and if the factor of down sampling is, is capital M then Y of N the description of Y of N is simply X of M N all right 0 otherwise which simply means that a down sampler ignores m minus 1 samples between 0 th and m th between m th and twice m th. You see y of n exists only for argument of x equal to 0 capital M twice m or on the other side minus m minus twice m and so on. In between 
between 0 and the mth sample, there will be m minus 1 samples. It simply ignores. All right, this is the process of downsampling. <coughs> We next take another example, example of a M point, example of a digital system, M point moving average system. The description of this is that Y of N is taken as the average of the present value and the past m minus 1 values, okay. It sums up, it is an accumulator in that sense. Accumulation is over x of n, the present input, x of n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus up to n minus capital M plus 1. That is the present sample and the past m minus 1 samples, it accumulates and then divides by capital M. This is why it is called the average and it is moving average because as N changes, the samples also change. When you take N plus 1, you take the previous M minus 1 samples. So, as you move with N, as you move with time, the average also changes and this is a very <coughs> useful device for data smoothing. Suppose you have a given x of n which is the true signal s of n plus some noise due to some reason there is a disturbance on this. Then when you take a moving average the noise component diminishes and in an usual process where the number of samples capital M is large the average of this would be equal to 0, all right. And therefore, moving average system is also called a data smoothing system, data smoothing system and it is very much used in experimental observations. And this brings us to classification of digital systems. There are various kinds of digital systems we shall look at the classification and then and then concentrate on a particular class of digital systems for the purpose of this class. First is a digital system can be either linear or non-linear. Formal definition is a digital system is linear if and only if x 1 2 leads to y 1 2 of course it is the argument is n the symbolism is x 1 this arrow stands for leads to x 1 if x 1 is the input y 1 is the output x 2 is the input then y 2 is the output implies which is indicated by an arrow with two horizontal lines implies that an arbitrary constant alpha x 1 n plus another arbitrary constant beta x 2 n that is if you make an input by a linear combination of the previous two inputs then this should lead to alpha y 1 of n plus beta y 2 of n. If this condition is obeyed, then the system is said to be linear. You notice that linearity implies two principles. One is called homogeneity. Homogeneity, which says that if the input is multiplied by a constant, the output is also multiplied by the same constant that is x1 leads to y1. If x1 is multiplied by alpha, y1 should also be multiplied by alpha, which has a very important, important corollary. That is if alpha equal to 0, 
that is if you have zero input the output should also be zero okay this is the principle of homogeneity and the other principle that is involved is superposition that is you superimpose two inputs alpha x1 n and beta x2 n then the output should also be a superposition of the individual output so two principles one is superposition and the other is homogeneity and the system is linear if it obeys both of them homogeneity as well as superposition there are systems which obey homogeneity but not superposition they are non linear systems similarly there are systems which obey superposition but not homogeneity okay so a linear system is one which in which homogeneity and superposition both principles are valid and one of the important outcomes of this is that zero input for a linear system zero input should lead to zero output but this is only a necessary condition it is not sufficient because zero input leads to zero output only implies homogeneity right it does not imply superposition therefore it's a necessary condition but not sufficient homogeneity and superposition are necessary and sufficient conditions for linearity which means that if a system disobeys or violates one of these principles it is non linear and very simple test would be first thing to do given a system does zero input lead to zero output if it does then you proceed with further testing not otherwise if it if zero input does not lead to zero output then the system is non linear and you you can stop further testing of it you you don't have to test superposition let's take several examples one is y of n it is the accumulator summation l equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of l this is a linear system because you put x1 x1 x2 find y1 y2 multiply them by alpha and beta superimpose you will get alpha y1 plus beta y2 this is very simple i mean i i don't have to carry out the steps but look at this the same system as i told earlier in one of the lectures can also be written as y of minus 1 plus summation l equal to 0 to infinity x of l this is not a linear system why not because making x of l equal to 0 does not make y of n equal to 0 making x of n equal to 0 does not make y of n equal to 0 because of the initial condition here so this is linear but this is non linear in this characterization of the system y of minus 1 is an initial condition can be given any arbitrary value but it the, this non linear system shall become linear if y of minus 1 is equal to 0 agreed all right let's take another example if you want to if you want to test this system by by rigorous means rigorous means mean you take alpha x1 plus beta x2 okay what uh, suppose you you make alpha x1 plus beta x2 what will be the output suppose this input we call it x3 what will be the output it will be y3 of minus 1 plus summation alpha x1 l plus beta x2 l with l going from 0 to infinity agreed on the other hand alpha y1 plus beta y2 shall be equal to shall lead to no i beg your pardon alpha y1 plus beta y2 shall be equal to y1 of minus 1 plus y2 of minus 1 plus the same summation agreed and these two 
are not necessarily equal because y3 minus 1 is not guaranteed to be y1 minus 1 plus y2 minus 1 because these are initial conditions can be set arbitrarily. By the same token, is this clear? But our first test was sufficient that is xn equal to 0 does not lead to yn equal to 0. By the same token, if you have a system which is described by m x n plus c, it is an equation to a straight line, it is a linear equation, but it does not describe a linear system because this is an initial condition and x n equal to 0 does not lead to y n equal to 0, agreed? A capacitor, an initially charged capacitor is non-linear. Okay? It is a non-linear system. Initially, initial flux, an inductor with initial flux is a non-linear inductor. Okay? So, this must be remembered. This is an equation to a straight line, but it does not describe a linear digital system. By the same token, if you have y n equal to let us say x of n minus 1 multiplied by x of n plus 1, this is not linear. This is not linear because superposition is not valid. Okay? If x n equal to 1 for, if x n equal to 0 for all n, y n shall be equal to 0. Homogeneity is satisfied, but not superposition. You can, you can write it alpha x1 plus beta x2 and show this. We next go to time invariance. Time invariance, time, because time has lost its significance in digital system, it is also sometimes called shift invariance, shift invariance because n minus 1 simply means shift to the right by one sample, shift to the left n plus 1. And however, we shall, we shall continue to use the term time varying or time invariant system. The definition is that if x n leads to y n, this implies a system is time invariant if x n leads to y n implies x of n minus n 0 leading to y of n minus n 0. Looks very innocent, but there are systems in which it is a bit involved to be able to test whether the system is time varying or time invariant. We will take a few examples, but the interpretation of this is that the output waveform, whether the input is shifted or not, the output waveform is preserved it is simply bodily shifted. If the input is shifted by n 0 samples, this shift can be to the right or to the left. In other words, n 0 is an integer. It can be either positive or negative. Okay? So, the output shape shall remain the same and the shape a plot of y of n versus n is called the waveform and therefore, shift invariance or time invariance is also and waveform preserving transformation. Is the point clear? The waveform, the shape of the signal over n remains the same. Now, let us test a couple of one example at least for time invariance. Let me mention that the combination of linear, linearity and time invariance, if a system obeys both linearity and time invariance is called an LTI system and LTI digital system shall be our focus in this course. Okay? We shall mainly be concerned with LTI digital systems wherever a non-linear or time varying system we deal with we shall point it out specifically. If nothing is specified then you take it that it is an LTI system. Let us take this my favorite example of an up sampler. An up sampler as you have known is described by x of n by L, capital L is the sampling rate increase factor 
for n equal to 0 plus minus l plus minus 2l and so on it is 0 elsewhere. So x of n leads to x of n by l call this call this n by l n by l is has to be an integer for the signal to exist so call this as p all right small p which is an integer <coughs> then x of n minus n0 if it is shifted should lead to x of p minus n0 all right it is the argument of x which is shifted by n0 and this is equal to x of n by l minus n0 whereas y of n minus n0 is equal to x of n minus n0 divided by l. This quantity and this quantity are not the same they are not equal is not that right one is n minus capital L n0 divided by L and the other is x of n minus n0 by L they are not identical and therefore the shape of the waveform is not preserved by the delay. So it is a time varying system similarly you can show that the down sampler is also a time varying system question is the up sampler a linear system is it a linear system it is a linear system you take x1 x2 multiply by alpha uh, and beta you get the same result so it is a linear system to understand this concept a little more carefully a little more uh, <coughs> in details let us take an example suppose we have an x of n which is like this 1, 2 and 3, 1, 2 and 3. This docker said 0, 1, 2, n. Suppose this is my x of n. Then if I up sample it by let us say a factor 2, then what will happen? In between two samples we shall have a 1, 0, all right. L minus 1, 2 minus 1 is 1 and therefore up sampling by a factor 2 will mean the waveform becomes this is y of n 0 at sample shall be preserved then at 1 there shall be a 0 at 2 there shall be a sample of amplitude 2 all right then another 0 and at this is 0 1 2 3 at 4 there shall be this sample 3, 4. So this is the up sampled version of the input waveform and this is my y of n. Okay. Now let us delay this signal by one sample. Let us see what is x of n minus 1. 0 shall be 0. I have shifted by one sample. So I will start with 1 here, 2 here and 3 here. Okay. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. Agreed? Delayed by one sample. Let us see if this is up sampled by the same factor 2, what the waveform becomes. I shall have n equal to 0 shall be 0 then at n equal to 1 I shall have a 0 between, because between any two samples there is a 0. So this is 1 then at 2 I shall have this signal that is 1, 1 then at 3 I shall have a 0 at 4 I shall have this signal 2, 3, 4, 5 there shall be a 0 and 6 I shall have this signal. 3 agreed does the waveform is this is this one sample delayed by this no 
it has changed. The waveform has not been preserved. Agreed? If you sample this, if you delay this by one sample, at one you should have one, which is not the case. At one you have a zero. And therefore, an up sampler is a time varying system. Whenever you are in doubt for an analytical proof, you take an example, a very simple example, that will clearly show whether the system is time varying or time invariant. Yes. Sir, um, why don't you uh, take the zero in the whole uh, zeros list and take one at one and then three, uh, two, zero? Well, that is not the case because at zero my signal range is zero to two. The question was why do not you take this zero? No, this zero comes because this system, this signal is delayed by one sample. It is delayed. You see, I, if your range of vision is only 0 to 2, you could not take this 3 either, is not it? You have to take the total signal. Delay means you have started at n equal to 0, so n equal to 0, it is 0. So, but so 0 is a part of the signal after the 0 is a, yes, it is a part of the signal. The signal itself is this. 0 to 3. But the signal is infinite from minus infinity to No, infinite. it is not. It is a finite signal. I have taken a finite signal. Then what is the value of uh, x and at uh, value 3? It does not exist. It is a finite signal of length. What? What is the length? 3. This signal becomes of length 4 by delaying by one sample. There is nothing else. It does not exist. For n less than 0, it does not exist. But if I delay it, if I advance it, that is shift to the left, then a signal will be created. So this waveform is not the same as this waveform. By delay, you have created a distortion. You have created two zeros before the first sample occurs. Okay? <coughs> waveform shape is from here. <laughs> not from here. Waveform shape is not from here. It has been shifted in time by uh, Correct. Twice After time. this it looks the same but you have to take this also that it remains 0 up to up to n equal to 2. I could have taken a little more uh, uh, complete. Sample, then? If it is an infinite sample mm -hmm. then also there will be distortion. You try one and be convinced. Take an infinite sample delayed by one sample or two sample, you will see that again the waveform is not, output waveform is not one sample delayed version of y of n. You can, con you, you do this yourself. I could have taken a, a more complicated example to show that uh, what you are thinking is not correct, but you can construct that. The next characterization we talk of causality. A digital system is said to be causal. Let us understand conceptually what it means. A causal system is one which cannot predict the future. In human beings, there are people who claim to be non-causal. They can predict. They are called astrologers, right? And uh, the roots are in the Vedas and Vedic astrology. It has come to be recognized as a course and all that. However, in electrical engineering systems, in systems that work, you say prediction may or may not work. And usually all predictions are very positive, right? They never say you will meet an accident or you will lose money. And they say once in a while to make them credible. Do not believe in all this. There are no... <coughs> No basis, no scientific basis of this. This business of stars, you know, getting together in a particular thing and all that. Um, <clears throat> there is no scientific basis. Till there is a scientific basis, uh, I refuse to believe in this. But in electrical engineering system, it cannot predict what will come in the future. And this is, that is called a causal system. So another name of causal system is also a realizable system. <coughs> A causal system is realizable. <clears throat> so, uh, formally, formally, the definition is that y of n, the present output depends on the present input, depends on 
x n its past values and perhaps also the past values of the output that is x of n then x of n minus i, i is any positive integer and y of n minus j where j is any positive integer not negative. Suppose it depends on x of n plus 1 that means uh, the system at the present moment predicts what will come one sample later. No, that is not permitted. We do not have a physical device which can advance time. We can only delay. There is no advancement. But then <coughs> let us see what, what the formal definition is. Formal definition is now in terms of formal mathematical language it says that a system, a digital system is causal if and only if x1 n equal to identically equal to 3 parallel lines means identically equal to x2 of n for n less than some integer capital N implies implies no two parallel lines implies if two inputs are identical up to a certain integer value of n that is up to we can make it less than equal to capital N up to capital N then the output during this interval must also be identical for n less than equal to n. What does it mean? It seems very interesting, but it means that if n small n exceeds capital N, x1 and x2 may be different. Then y1 and y2 will also be different. But so long as the two inputs are identical, what comes in future for x1 or x2 is not anticipated by the system. This is the formal definition and this is the interpretation. Let us take a very simple example and see whether the system is causal or non-causal. <coughs> Suppose you have a system in which y of n equal to x of n squared. Is this causal? No, it is non-causal. Put n equal to 2 then y of 2 shall be equal to x of 4, x of 4 is yet to come and therefore this is non-causal. Suppose you have y of n equal to let us say moving average system in which x of n plus x of n minus 1 plus x of n plus 1 divided by 3, this is also non-causal because y of n depends on x of n plus 1. Agreed? This is also non-causal. <coughs> but then if we cannot realize a non-causal system, if all our systems are causal, why are you talking of it? Why are you making a distinction? Distinction arises because non-causal signal processing, please understand this carefully, non-causal signal processing is possible from recorded data. The geophysicist for example, he goes to the field and records by seismographs the vibrations. He, he gets back to the laboratory and then analyzes it. Now when he is analyzing a particular output y of n, he knows what is going to come because it is a recorded data. All right. So on recorded information, non-causal signal processing is possible and in geophysics in particular <coughs> also in in uh, weather prediction non-causal processing is possible most but you cannot realize this in hardware okay it's a processing data processing basically hardware realizations has have always to be causal you cannot anticipate what is going to come all signals in nature are causal. Okay. Is it a comment or a question? <laughs> question. Are all signals non causal? Okay. Uh, formally, x of n, a signal x of n is causal if 
x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 all right you have to start the signal somewhere call that n equal to 0 and therefore the signal is causal but then if you have values like x of minus 1 x of 0 and so on this is a non causal signal all right this is a non causal signal so for signal signals can be non causal that is what is x of minus 1 you start your processing at n equal to 0 but you know the initial value also it is the initial value okay if you combine this then it is a non causal signal mostly we shall talk of causal signals what I said earlier was causal system causal system cannot predict what will happen in future but if you have recorded data it is possible to predict and if if we have a signal which has initial values you start your processing whatever time you start you call that n equal to 0 n equal to 0 is arbitrary you cannot go back to the origin of time that will require Stephen Hawking even he cannot go back in time okay so wherever we start our processing we call it n equal to 0 and a signal is causal if x of n is 0 for n less than 0. Our next concern is stability. Unless you want an oscillator, a digital oscillator, all digital systems to be useful have to be stable. There is no other way. And stability that we bother about in DSP is the so called BIBO stability that is bounded input bounded output. So the formal definition is that a digital system is stable if and only if if and only if a bounded input x of n less than B of b subscript x which is less than infinity that is that is the way to show a bounded input a bounded signal is one whose which is which is less than a certain number which number is less than infinity for all n if this implies implies that the output y of n is less than some other number b y which is also less than infinity that is if the input signal input sequence is bounded the output sequence should also be bounded y of n is equal to 1 by n squared obviously is an unstable system okay let us take some examples we take the example of the moving average system y of n is equal to 1 by m summation x of n minus k k equal to 0 upper limit is capital M minus 1. Now if x of n is bounded by b x we can have an equality sign it does not matter which is less than infinity obviously y of n shall be less than equal to 1 by m summation k equal to 0 to m minus 1 let us put all all of them as their bounded value the uppermost value that is bx so this is simply equal to bx and therefore this is a stable system is this clear is it clear less than equal to I have written so I can replace all of them by their uppermost value even then it does not exceed bx therefore it is a bounded input bounded output system suppose my y of n is simply an accumulator going from k equal to 0 to infinity x of n minus k is this a stable system no because there are infinite number of samples so even if x of n is bounded the output is bound to go to infinity as n goes to infinity so this is an unstable system okay now <coughs> let's talk about so even if the value of x 
percent after some uh, interval is going to zero, even if the man is uh, well, then it's a finite. So we have padded the zero. The okay, okay. Which means what the, the question is? Suppose x of n exists between zero and n minus one. All the rest are zero. Is that what you are saying? Okay. This is obviously a stable system. Yes, but this implies if we have to go to up to infinity. You see, if this is the case, <coughs> then we we shall replace the upper limit by n minus one. Any bounded sequence, unless it is it is characterized otherwise, will lead to a bounded sequence at the output if you do not go up to infinity. If this is the signal then you shall go only up to n minus 1. There is no point in there is no fun in adding zeros, right. So, <coughs> stability is inherently related to feedback. Stability is inherently related to feedback, not necessarily, not necessarily. I told you that if y of n is x of n by n squared, there is no feedback there. But of course, this can be written as a feedback system. It can be computed with feedback, okay. But it can also occur without feedback. Suppose the sequence itself is unbounded, then of course, output shall also be unbounded. But in general, what you are saying is true. Stability is inherently related to feedback. In a non-feedback system, a non-feedback system cannot usually be unstable. Then we talk of passivity. The concept of passivity is very familiar in analog systems. That is, the energy of the output cannot exceed the energy of the input. Okay? As a digital system is said to be passive, if this criterion is satisfied, namely the energy of the output, which by definition is y n magnitude squared, well n can be for all possible values minus infinity to plus infinity and the energy of the input is x of n magnitude squared again n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. The system is passive if the output energy is less than or equal to the input energy. In other words the system cannot generate energy. RLC networks are passive. On the other hand if you have RLC networks combined with op amps or transistors it can become active. Where does the extra power come from? The power supply. Okay. There is, uh, there is the, the digital system is also a uh, passive system is defined the same way. If this inequality is satisfied with the equality sign, then we call the system as lossless. Okay. This is an artificial concept. There is no concept of energy in numbers when you are handling only numbers, but we have to introduce this concept because it facilitates mathematical treatment. We take an example, suppose y of n is equal to some quantity alpha times x of n minus n, then this would be a passive system if, if, yes magnitude alpha, alpha can be complex, if magnitude alpha is less than 1. On the other hand, if magnitude alpha is greater than 1, then it is an active system. <coughs> we conclude this lecture in a couple of minutes with uh, another example. Suppose you have a time reversal system, a digital system which simply reverses the time. Is it a linear system? Is it a linear system? Yes, yes it is. Linear, yes. You, yes, superposition. You take x1 and x. Homogeneous if x1 is 0, y of n is 0. 
and therefore it is a linear system. It obeys superposition as well as homogeneity. Is it causal? No, because put n equal to minus 1, then your output is x of 1, what will come in future. So it is non-causal. Is it time varying? It is time varying, it is not time invariant. Because x of n minus n0 leads to, I beg your pardon, single arrow, leads to x of minus n minus n0, not plus. Okay, the trick is this. In such cases where there can exist a confusion, what you do is y of n, write it as x of minus n and put minus n equal to p. Then x of n, this is x of n leads to. So x of n minus n0 shall lead to x of p minus n0. It is the argument which is delayed. And this is equal to x of minus n minus n0. On the other hand, y of n minus n0 is equal to x of, yes, minus n plus n0. These two are different. Therefore, it is a time varying system. Is it a stable system? Stable? Yes, of course. If x over is bounded, y of n has to be bounded. So it is stable. Finally, is it passive? Yes, it is passive. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in the next uh, lecture, we shall talk about impulse and step response of a digital system and the correlation between the two. That is all for today.